With the 17th pick in the 1989 NBA draft, the Seattle Supersonics select Sean Kemp from Trinity Valley, Texas Junior College. Long before becoming a NBA All-Star, Sean Kemp was just another kid in Elkhart County who dreamed of becoming a professional basketball player. It probably started in junior high. <laughs> so, but I, I mean that in a positive way. But, I mean, we shared these dreams with each other. We, we practiced my autograph when I was in seventh and eighth grade. So we had a lot of expectations, not just for myself, but we had a lot of personal goals that, that I wanted to reach and also I think the guys wanted me to reach. For Kemp, the dream was more realistic than it was for others. From the first day he stepped on the Concord campus, he was already earning praise from his future coaches and teammates. Yeah, I, I knew from the beginning that he, when he came up as a freshman that he would be starting. With loads of talent though, also came some early arrogance and growing pains. Our hardest job, I think, was to find ways in practice to motivate him and, and, and continue to try to make him better every day. This is a gym where I practice and I've definitely been put out this gym a couple of times because of bad practice habits. You know, he, I think he felt, you know, he could kind of just glide on through a little bit, not, and we worked him hard, you know. If he, if he wanted that dream, we pushed him. But by the end of his freshman year, Kemp helped Concord do something they hadn't done in eight years. Win a sectional title. You know, it was uh, just the excitement where I think he brought basketball back to the Elkhart and to Concord, actually. When we got a couple of the banners up, that just made us feel like rock stars then, so that even made it even better. We were so happy, we kind of forgot that we were playing the next week. So at that point in time was where we really adjusted our goals and said, hey, from this point in time, you know, we're, we're not going out to say we're going to win. We, our goal is to win the sectional or regional. Uh, at, from that point in time, we said our goal is to win the state. Kemp continued to work hard to become a better player and eventually became a household name throughout Michiana. I remember the Indianapolis Pacers bringing in one of their, their players here doing a, doing a camp right here in his gym. And um, I think it was a sophomore, and then I, I ended up beating him in a game of one-on-one -on -one to ten. <laughs> <laughs> there were times that there was, uh, there were things that happened in the game and you just kind of shook your head and said, that's unbelievable. When his senior year rolled around, every place the Minutemen played was packed. Former St. Joe head coach Steve Austin realized the Indians gym couldn't hold the crowd Kemp would bring. So he came up with the idea of playing at the Notre Dame Joyce Center. Actually, I had to go to my principal five times and to ask him, he, he thought I was crazy, he's giving up a home game. When we got there, they just had the padded seats, the arena down below, um, and before the JV game started that, was completely full. So the next thing you know, they started pulling out bleachers from up above, and a section at a time came out, they filled up just as quick as they were pulling them out. We had our one kid, it was a, a lob dunk, and it was a dunk play for Sean, and my center was in perfect position. My center was, his hands were maybe at the, at the rim, and uh, all of a sudden you saw Sean, and all you saw was probably his waistline at my kid's head. And he had to be at, at at least the box high, if not higher, and just dunked it on him. And that's when my kid turned around, you know, and I just, <laughs> what can you do? You can't stop that. Well, there were plenty of fans who cherished Kemp's talent at Concord, there were also many who tried to tear him down when the Minutemen played on the road. Uh, you know, ignorant fans and, you know, uh, throwing things at him, uh, you know, saying bad words. Um, and just to say some of the things that were said, um, yeah, it's, it, was, it was disheartening. Some would have crumbled under the scrutiny. Kemp instead used it to fuel the greatest run in Concord history. Sectional, regional, semi-state were great, and uh, it just it seemed like we were destined to win it. You had a chance to beat a small little school, and you could upset the big school. Uh, we just kind of ran out of steam a little bit, and and came up with to a and played a really really good Muncie Central team. 
Not only did Kemp feel down after not winning the title, but there's another award that he still feels to this day that he was shorted of. You know, Coach Knight would come here to the gym a lot and watch me practice, and, and uh, we had a lot of meetings around this area, and he, he's the type of guy who uh, he, he kind of lets you know right away. And, uh, you, you know, he lets you know if, um, <laughs> if, you, if you go blue. Sean verbally committing to the University of Kentucky. The thing that attracted me was the tradition. There's no Mr. Basketball when you go blue. It was a disgrace. Um, he was by far you know, the best player in the state. But even without a Mr. Basketball award in his trophy case, Kemp is still remembered by many as the greatest player to ever play in Northern Indiana. In my opinion, he was the best high school player um, ever in, in the Northern part of the state. Um, and I don't think we'll ever see another one like him. I want to see the next Sean Kemp. I don't want to be the best player in this area. I want to see the next Sean Kemp rise up and I think, um, I think it will. It will definitely happen. If you've seen, if you've seen a kid from Elkhart, Indiana, as myself, 25 years develop his game, I think no doubt about it in the future, the future is waiting to happen.